Going to have a business update for you now. We're going to start with the US Federal Reserve's decision to raise its interest rates once again this December. For more on it, we're joined here on set by Charles Pellegrin. Charles. That's right, Stuart. Uh, this has been the, the American Central Bank's strategy uh, since the beginning of the year to combat soaring inflation. And it's still unclear whether or not it is uh, bearing fruit. The Fed uh, raised its benchmark interest rate by half a percent this time. It marks the seventh rate hike so far this year. Fed Chief Jay Powell warned that high interest rates are here to stay for some time with even more hikes in the cards and that a recession in the U.S. remains possible. Brian Quinn has the details. The battle against inflation continues. The U.S. Federal Reserve has hiked its benchmark overnight borrowing rate by half a percent, bringing the new target rate to between four and a quarter and four and a half percent, its highest level in 15 years. It's the Fed's seventh rate hike this year, as America's central bank struggles to tame inflation that hit 9.1 percent in June, its highest level in four decades. And while U.S. inflation has slowed in recent months to 7.1 percent in November, Fed Chief Jerome Powell says interest rates will continue to rise. We are strongly committed to bringing inflation back down to our 2 percent goal. The historical record cautions strongly against prematurely loosening policy. We will stay the course until the job is done. Wednesday's hike was milder than the three-quarter percent of the previous four. Fed officials, though, now expect their key rate to hit 5.1 percent by the end of next year, half a percent higher than previously forecast, and for rates to stay high for some time. By making borrowing more expensive, the Fed hopes to cool the U.S. economy enough to slow inflation without pushing it into recession, a scenario known as a soft landing. But the forecast is already gloomy. U.S. GDP is expected to grow by just half a percent next year, as the Fed warns that restoring price stability will mean economic pain. And this hawkish position from the Federal Reserve is what's driving the markets this uh, Thursday, as we can see on uh, European stock exchanges. We're all trading in negative territory at the open, as we can see the DAX in Frankfurt down by one third of a percent. The Paris Cat Gallon down by three tenths of a percent and the, fund, the FTSE in London down by two tenths of a percent. And uh, we're, we're seeing uh, also a similar picture in Asia currently with the, well, actually, <laughs> uh, Asian indices uh, re recovering after uh, initially starting the, the session uh, trading negatively on the back of that uh, Federal Reserve uh, uh, rate hike with uh, the Hang Seng in Hong Kong up by 0.7% uh, and the Nikkei in Tokyo up by just around the same amount. The mainland Chinese uh, share, as we, can, as, we, as we saw with Shanghai, falling as the country has posted some underwhelming economic data. Industrial production and retail sales in November have both missed expectations. Industrial production, which measures output from manufacturing, utilities, and mining sectors, grew 2.2 percent over the year, which is much lower than the 3.6 percent uh, forecast. And retail sales, which is a good indicator of consumer spending, declined 5.9 percent instead of a 3.7 percent uh, expectation. Now, even as the country is currently lifting COVID restrictions, uh, this shows the impact of the previous uh, zero COVID policy on both output and demand. Other factors are at play as well, the slowdown of the property sector and exports being uh, affected by slowing global demand. And social media and video sharing platform TikTok, owned by Chinese group uh, ByteDance, is undergoing a sustained attack from the U.S. government, as are many other Chinese tech companies. The latest salvo, the Senate unanimously passing a bill that bans federal employees from using the app on government phones or devices. It'll then head to the House of Representatives before being signed into law. The concern for the Senate is that because of TikTok's ownership, personal data belonging to Americans could end up in the hands of the Chinese state. And let's end with some box office news. Ten years ago, Avatar by James Cameron became the highest grossing film ever. The release this week of its sequel, Avatar, The Way of Water, is prompting speculation of whether or not it will come close to that record. It's set to make between $150 and $175 million in its opening weekend in the U.S., which would make it the third biggest opening of the year behind the latest Black Panther and Doctor Strange installments. But the success of the first movie was in its staying power, playing in theaters for 234 days straight between 2009 and 2010. 
So hope is the new movie will have a similar shelf life. The stakes are high for James Cameron, who uh, said, Stuart, that the film would have to be the third or fourth highest grossing movie ever just to break even. Mm, that's good. He's going to be lucky, I think. What, did you see the first one? I did, yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing the first one. You know, it was all right. <laughs> Didn't think it was that great. Anyway, I thought it was pretty enjoyable. Yeah, you enjoyed the first one? Yeah. yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know if I'll bother with the second one. We'll, <laughs> we'll see. I'll wait for the reviews, although I've seen a few reviews that aren't that great.